Stefan Diggs was traded. And what you sit there and go like, wait, they traded a a fifth and a, it was a fifth and a sixth or a sixth and a seventh. Um, they trade two late picks and Stefan Diggs for a second round pick. And you're like, what? And then you look and Stefan Diggs is in a contract year, which means uh, undoubtedly he's gone to Bill's management and said, this, if you want me to stay, this is the number, but I'm not playing in the last year of a contract. Now, could they make him play? Of course they could. And oh yeah, by the way, even after that, they own his rights to, to franchise tag him. But there's something interesting going on in sports and you might want to pay attention to it because it's a real thing. Who had more talent? Who had more talent and probably and more skill? LSU or Iowa? Right, if you were to put overall rosters, who had more talent? LSU. Um, last year in the playoffs, did anybody have more talent than the Dodgers? No. Padres? I mean, those are the two most talented teams, right? Yankees? Those are the top three. Did any of them, were any of them in the World Series? No. Did they play in the World, did they play in the World Series? No. So they didn't win the World Series either. Uh, in the NFL, does anybody have more talent than the Eagles? Probably not. So, what held those teams back? Heck, Ohio State football. Anybody have more talent than those guys? No. It's not always the most talented teams that win. It's the most talented, cohesive, one agenda teams that win. One agenda. And we say all the time, this is a copycat league, don't we? The NFL is a copycat league. I mean, you look at what the Niners have done in spending no money at the quarterback position. And then, you know, the, the Vikings have a general manager who worked for the Niners. And guess what they have? No quarterbacks making any sort of money. They got like less than $15 million in their quarterback room right now. Why? Well, it helps you balance the books and helps you load up on overall talent. But the point is that the most talented teams don't always win. And while I, I know that Stefan Diggs is not what he was at his peak, he's still very, very good. And while I'm sure the Bills did not want to link him to a top of the market extension for his contract, that's a reasonable thing. The reality is you only get rid of Stefan Diggs and take on the fifth largest cap hit of all time if you wanted him out the building, if he wore out his welcome, if he's just a P-I-T-A, pain in the arse, right? So I get that we're looking at it. We're like, hey, D'Amico Ryans was awesome. D'Amico Ryans can keep him in line. He probably can, right? You look at the betting odds and the betting odds for the Houston Texans have spiked People are sitting there going like, man, there's your AFC rep. That's the team that can take down the Chiefs. And then you sit there and go, wait a second. The Chiefs let their own star wide receiver walk, traded him to the Miami Dolphins. And since trading a guy who doesn't have, you know, there, there aren't the personality quirks in terms of giving the ball. There's off the field baggage. Uh, but for the most part, Tyreek Hill is a great, great talent and has remained a great, great talent. And they've won two Super Bowls without him. So I think that there is no argument to be made for it being anything other than they were just tired of that stuff. They're tired of always asking the question about Stefan Diggs and why was he unhappy and what his relationship is like with Josh Allen and whether or not he's all in on what they're doing. And, you know, they, when they changed offensive coordinators, remember the previous offensive coordinator, Dorsey right, was there when they traded for him. Now their offensive coordinator who was on LSU staff, you know, when they went, when they were the best football team, maybe we've ever seen. And then of course he was the offensive coordinator with the Carolina Panthers. He, he has, it's not that he hasn't coached stars before. It's he obviously doesn't overvalue Stefan Diggs to the point where he wants to green light 
or says we should give this guy a contract extension, continue to build around him. But my takeaway is really simple. LSU women's basketball is more talented than Iowa. They didn't win. The Eagles were more talented than most any other team in the NFL. In the NFL. They didn't win. The Dodgers were more talented. They didn't win. We can go through this time and again. Chemistry matters. Everybody pulling the same direction and rush. And the, the two things that'll get your ass fired is if you ask for too much money and you can't get along with people. And that's in anybody's job. And my guess is and I'm an outsider to the Buffalo Bills. I know people who are in the building. I know people who cover the team. And they generally said, yeah, they were kind of, they were done with him. Ready to move on. And I was like, $31 million in cap hit. That's the fifth highest of all time. Like, they'll be fine. They got, they got Josh Allen. And then, oh yeah, by the way, this is one of those, you come at the king, you bet not miss. It does feel like any rumor about Josh Allen, anything that's been leaked, you you blame a Stefan Diggs because he has an open line of communication with somebody in the media. That's my that's my very reasonable outsider with the help of insiders' opinion on what happened with Buffalo and led Stefan Diggs to be traded for a couple of hockey pucks today. A couple of hockey pucks. Uh, I do want to ask you, Dan, what's the fantasy impact of this? The fantasy impact. Um, it's funny because Stefan Diggs' lack of being a fantasy impact was a huge story uh, this past season. The Bills don't really have now that number one target, but considering on how Diggs wasn't used, you're just wondering how they're now going to maybe divvy things up. Dalton Kincaid. Uh, it was a first-round pick they took last year out of Utah, who really emerged last year. He's likely to get more action. James Cook out of the backfield is a possibility. But it's, yeah, it's crazy because this is also a team, Doug, that was, I mean, in Buffalo, in terms of like how close they are, they were a Deion Dawkins blocking Chris Jones away on one play from likely beating the Chiefs. Sure, and then they were 13 seconds away a couple years ago. Yes, Okay, and then there were the the Demar Hamlin thing uh, through that thing. You know that was that made it really really hard La- uh, two years ago, right? So they've been knocking on that door, knocking on that door, knocking on that door. Yeah, and the re- the reason I the reason I bring it up is because of the non factor that Diggs has been. Yeah, but this team still was in that position to win that game. So you take Stephon Diggs out, and you say, man, the Bills are really really going to be hurting. And I just I don't know if that's the case. I, I I obviously it's going to hurt at least at some point, but for the fantasy aspects of it, maybe Josh Allen's numbers are not as good. But in the overall scheme of things, I don't know how much of a subtraction it is for the Buffalo Bills. I mean, Gabe Davis isn't back. He right. ended up leaving via free agency. Right, and Gabe Davis didn't play right in that in that last game anyway. But again, it's the same thing, right? So they they lose Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis. And we said this before, copycat league. You pay your quarterback a ton of money, mm-hmm. hey. and in this case, they got rid of Stephon Diggs probably a year early rather than a year late, and then you load up with young wide receivers. Sure. Which is, by the way, the same thing that the Chiefs just did and won a Super Bowl. Emerging tight end? Yeah. Yeah, it's... <laughs> copycat league. When you look at the tight ends, this is the other thing, big picture, Doug, about it. In terms of, we talk so much about like the wide receivers maybe not having an impact on teams uh, going to Super Bowls. Obviously, Travis Kelsey is a supreme talent, maybe the best to ever play the position. But when you just look at the success of teams that have gone to the Super Bowls and who their tight ends were, shows you like where there's, I mean, you could go back over the last you know decade or so and be like, oh, top tight end, really good tight end, really good tight end, solid tight end, top tight end. They play a big, big part of it, and maybe the Bills end up just going that that route and formulating that team. Hmm. Um, Dan is, in, in addition to knowing a ton about football, and he has his own, you can hear him Sundays on Fox Sports Radio, I, I asked the fantasy question because if you don't know, he has the I Want Your Flex uh, podcast, yes, which is really good. So download that one when you, when you get a chance. Download, su- subscribe, rate, review. Um, it's, I, I got to tell you, like we can, every we do this all the time. Guy gets traded, and look, there have been guys. We saw it happen in Philadelphia. Guy gets traded, and all of a sudden, like man, they got him for what? He signs a new contract, and then one year later, you're like, oh, that's why Tennessee got rid of him. 
feels like that's the feeling of the Bills. And it feels like the Bills are like, sitting there going like, let's just get a bunch of young, hungry wide receivers. We got a good tight end. We got a great quarterback. We'll figure it out that way. We'll save a bunch of money eventually doing it this way. Stephon Diggs' last 100-yard game for the Bills came on October 15th. Yeah. Yeah, we're a little behind the Stephon Diggs thing as fans. Well, you know, like we think of him because of the Minneapolis miracle, which was how many years ago is that? Seven? Yeah, it was, it was Super Bowl 52. So, yeah, six. Six years ago. Yeah, six, seven. Years. We think of Stephon Diggs, dominant Minnesota, dominant early on in Buffalo, when felt like he lost a step, likely wants a new contract, is a bit of a pain in the ass. And you can be a pain in the ass when you're one of the best wide receivers on earth. He's no longer that guy. And you look around the league, and the Chiefs won with young wide receivers who by the end of the season came of age and by trading away Tyreek Hill, who's probably the best talent in the league, if you want to be honest about it. 